So listen to this. My son's birthday was yesterday. He turns 11. And what many people don't know that follow um, my ministry page and TikTok and things like that is that my son is a twin. Um, I gave birth to twins in 2012. Um, and my daughter passed away a day after her birth and she was diagnosed in utero with a condition called trisomy 13. There was actually a 0% chance that she would have that because they monitor you when you're 36 and you're, you know, you're 34, I should say, and you're pregnant and, you're in, and you have twins, um, you're considered uh, kind of a little bit more at risk. And so we were monitored. Um, but she was diagnosed with trisomy 13 in the womb. And so the first thing the doctor told me was that I should get a partial reduction because she was known as what is incompatible with life. And I said, that is not going to happen. Um, I understand she has a condition, but I prefer to let her grow and let's see what the Lord is gonna do. And if he heals her on earth, he heals her on earth. And if he heals her in heaven, he heals her in heaven, but I'm still a mama and this is my daughter and I'm not going to do a partial reduction, which is a euphemism for abortion. So the doctor said, well, then I'm not going to monitor her. And I said, well, maybe we should revisit the terms of the fact that you work for me um, and I am your patient and you are my doctor and I am pregnant with two babies. And so yes, you will monitor her because she may not be according to you, compatible with life outside the womb. But while she's inside me and while the Lord is growing her in me, I do want to hear her heartbeat. I do want to see her face. Even if her features are not fully formed, that is my child. Well, she was offended, but she did what she was told to do because it was simply an ultrasound. It was monitoring. Um, it all, her life mattered. So needless to say, fast forward to an emergency C-section. Um, unexpected. I ended up with pneumonia. I hemorrhaged, uh, lost half the blood of my body, needed a transfusion, died, all of these things. And that's a story for another time. But needless to say, this uh, doctor actually, when I visited aftercare, was weeping. And I said, what, what's wrong? And she said, I was wrong. She said, when we thought we were going to lose all of you, we thought all of you were going to die. And she said, and when I opened you up, I saw Eve she, your daughter was spooning your son. She said in covering his nose from the hemorrhage and blocking it. And that's how he lived. Eve means bringer of life. The Lord told me to name her that. She said, what I saw was a miracle. Try see me 13 babies don't even move. And she's like, there is a God and there are miracles. I couldn't see it at the time, but there it was. Amen to that. Indeed, there is a God and he does miracles. He shows up when it seems that all hope is gone, when the world feels like it's closing in and the weight of everything seems too much to bear, that's often when we experience God's miraculous presence. Just when you think all hope is lost, he has a way of breaking through the darkness and bringing light into our lives. It's like he's saying, I'm here, you're not alone, and I've got this. Watch how this year's even started out. Kim and I were blessed with tickets to the Monday night football game. We were there when that tragedy took place on the field. It was terrible. I'd never experienced anything like what I saw in that state. And when I went home, all the news, ESPN, NFL, all the news broadcasts came on, the sports broadcasts came on. And these networks that would have never dared mention the name of God, all of a sudden started saying, we need to pray. We need to pray. We need to pray. In fact, one anchor on ESPN saying, you know what, y'all keep saying we need to pray. Why don't we stop and pray right now? And live on television, he said, Lord, we come to you today because you are the only one who can do something about this. And guess what? God showed up. That is 2023. Get ready to see the presence of God move in places you never even dreamed possible. He's opening doors. The power of prayer can move mountains, literally and figuratively. Sometimes we underestimate just how powerful a simple prayer can be. But remember, our God listens. When we kneel down and talk to him, it's as if time stops and it's just you and God. That's an amazing thing. And it can lead to transformations and miracles in our lives. Prayer is not just a one-way conversation. It's a direct line to God. It's how we share our joys, our sorrows, our worries, and our thanks. It's a moment to be vulnerable and say, 
God, here I am, all of me, and I trust you with it all. So why do Christians struggle with their health? Why does it feel like they're always praying and praying and yet nothing seems to happen? Nothing seems to work. They seem to be getting worse. Maybe that's you, or maybe that's a friend struggling with cancer, or whatever that may be. This video is just for you, and if you want to share it with them, I would highly suggest you do, because this is the foundation. This is the rudimentary principle that you need to overcome and to obviously increase in your revelation concerning healing. So in the book of Proverbs, chapter 4, verse 20 to 22, this is what is written here. My son, attend to my words. Incline thine ear unto my sayings. Let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of thine heart. Right? Verse 22. For they are life unto those that find them, and health to all their flesh. Are you getting this? So the word is health to all your flesh. This word in the Hebrew is marpe, which means medicine. It means a healing agent, a cure. So you can read this, that the Word of God, the Bible, God wants you to know that His Word is medicine to your flesh. So what does that mean? Well, if you're sick, that's why you need to consume the Word. Consume the Word and consume it on healing. Confess. Read the Word. Get the Word in you because that is health to your flesh. Sometimes in our lives we all come to that point where we question God. During those times, you might feel like you're shouting into a void, wondering if your prayers are just bouncing off the ceiling. It can be disheartening. You start asking yourself, did I do something wrong? Is God mad at me? Where is he when I need him the most? Here's what I want to tell you. Even when it feels like God is absent, he's not. I know, it's easier said than felt, but consider the story of the footprints in the sand. When there was only one set of footprints, it wasn't because God left, it was because he was carrying you. In the Bible, God promises never to leave us nor forsake us. Even Jesus, hanging on the cross, felt that profound sense of isolation, asking, My God, why have you forsaken me? Where is God in your darkest days? You've been in a place where there is darkness and you've cried out to God and you haven't seen deliverance. You haven't seen a response. And in those moments, our natural tendency is to say, God, where are you? When we're going through our dark days, we can't see what's happening in the heavenlies, but we know who's there and we know how he responds to his people. But we can't see that. Truth be told, we can't feel that. We can't. We have to believe that. We are in the midst of difficulty and darkness. We feel like we're abandoned and alone. We can't see what's going on in the heavenlies. God is about his business and our prayers are doing what our prayers are intended to do. Here's what's amazing. When things are happening like this, our tendency is to accuse God of not having heard. Do you know why we do that? We do that because we think so much of ourselves. In other words, I'm in the midst of my darkness and I pray and I say, God hasn't heard me. Well, well, why? Why do I say God hasn't heard me? Well, because I asked him to do something and he didn't do it. Well, who do you think you are? Do do you realize what's being said there? God must not have heard me. Because when God hears me, when I jerk his chain, he does what I tell him to do. So if he had heard what I told him to do, we would know that he'd heard because he would have done it by now. How arrogant we are. How arrogant we are. Never underestimate the power of prayer. Whether you're praying for guidance, for healing, or simply for peace, know that God hears you. He may not answer right away or in the way you expect, but he is listening and he cares deeply about what's in your heart. Thanks for joining me today remember to never underestimate the power of talking to God. If this message touched you, please consider sharing it with someone who needs to hear it. And don't forget to subscribe for more uplifting messages like this one. God bless.